Hey guys, Majeffries here, and welcome to episode 97 of You Don't Win Anything With Kids. Uh, last episode, we beat Newport County 2-1. Wasn't a very interesting performance, wasn't a very good performance. Um, I mean, we scored two good goals, but then we got very sloppy in the second half, and we could have ended up with a draw if we weren't too careful. So, uh, yeah, looking to improve still, but that's that's what you do in these seasons. You learn as you go along. Um, I have some transfer news for you, however. I have agreed a deal to sign a player, uh, and I've mentioned him before. Um, I was I wanted to sign him before. I was talking about game-changing players at the time. I was looking through the transfer list. Uh, and eventually I found a player who, like I said, I've mentioned him before, and I actually think he could do a job for us now. So I put in a bid. It was a hefty bid, I admit, £1.8 million. Pounds. Um, it's spread over four years, so I mean I can't be bothered to work it out. You guys work out how much that is per year. Um, I think he's one for the future. He can carry us through League Two, through League One, probably as far as the Premier League before uh, the quality of players around him becomes greater than his quality. Uh, he's had a bit of Premier League experience before. Um, in real life, he's doing fantastically well in League One. Um, for Bristol City, and he is J. Emmanuel Thomas. Now he's on. He's at Sheffield United on here. Uh, you can see he's only 24. Uh, he's actually worth 2.4 million. So I got him for 600,000 pounds less than he's worth. Sheffield United are currently playing in League One. So you know, it's it's a pretty decent signing. And if you look at the positions he can play in, he can play up front, attacking midfield. Left midfield, right midfield, and if need be, centre midfield. So he's incredibly versatile. Uh, he was unhappy at Sheffield United. He was transfer listed by request, uh, which made it very, very easy for him to sign for us. Uh, he's six foot three, so he's good in the air. He's got a pretty good range of stats. If you go on his scout report. He's good for, to become a Premier League uh, right winger. Although I think, to be honest, I'd favour him down the left a bit more because he's left footed. Uh, in terms of attacking midfield, he'll be our second best attacking midfielder behind Lee Tomlin. If we go left midfield, he'd be our joint top with Johnston and Tomlin. Uh, if I go right midfield, he'll be our best ahead of Delamond and Johnston. Uh, and if I go striker, he'll actually be our best striker as well. So, uh, I mean, this is now. By the time he joins, our coaches might have a different opinion. This is our scouting's opinion. Uh, I'm not even sure which scout it is. Galvin. Let's see, who else have I got? Olivier. Let's see what Olivier thinks. So yeah, Olivier thinks that Morrison is, is up there as well. I don't know why Campbell's still on the list, because he doesn't play for us anymore. Attacking left midfield, so he doesn't even appear on this list. Attacking right midfield, there he is, he's ahead of Bobo and Delamond. And in the centre, he's up there. So, he's a good player. And if we look at his history, he scored 38... Uh, sorry, he made 38 appearances, scored 11 goals for Bristol City in the season that we are currently in. So he's doing well for Bristol City at the moment, but I mean that's pretty good. And Sheffield United paid a million pounds for him. So they made a profit on him, but at the same time I think we've gained a player with experience and know-how to get us to that next level. Uh, he never actually made an appearance for Arsenal, having said he's got Premier League experience. Played once for uh, played 11 times for Blackpool, scored once, scored 5 in 14 for Doncaster, scored 2 in 14 for Cardiff, scored 6 in 41 for Ipswich after joining for a mil one and a half million pounds. Actually, Ipswich made a loss on him. But I don't know what, how, who did uh, Ipswich get when Bristol City signed him? I don't know. It's not my business. Um, the point is, he's ours. And the actual uh, aim of this episode was to show you guys this. We are playing Exeter away in the first round of the FA Cup. I think it's the first round. Yeah, first round of the FA Cup. This is our FA Cup debut. We didn't play a single FA Cup game in our previous two seasons. Why that is, I'm not too sure. It might be something to do with you have to be an established club for a certain number of years beforehand. Uh, point is, we're playing in it now. This is the greatest uh, domestic cup in the world, in my opinion. And I'm sure a lot of people out there will agree with me on this one. Um, you know, the final is at Wembley, the home of football. 
Uh, and you, you can't really... Everyone dreams of lifting the FA Cup. The World Cup and the FA Cup are the two trophies that every footballer wants to win. Uh, so our lineup. Well, you can see I've put Quintarco in goal. Jones at left back. Now V is looking jaded. So I think I'm going to actually move Klopmus, the versatile fullback, to right back. Um, also going to have Cart. Actually, no, I'm not going to have Cartwright. I'm not going to have Cartwright because he doesn't look too happy. We'll have Stevens, and we will have Partridge. <clears throat> so that's our back four. Midfield, we're going to have Forster Kasky on the left. We're going to have Mantum on the right. We are going to have um, Beckhold on the left of midfield. We're going to have Drusen on the right of midfield. And because he didn't get into the last team, we're going to have Johnston through the middle. Because I felt bad about that. Uh, and then we're going to stick Morrison up front. I think, yep, that's that looks like a pretty good lineup to me. Bench. Uh, we're going to put O'Brien on the bench. We're going to give him another chance. Because like I said, every player gets a chance in my teams. So he gave a shocking performance in the friendly. Dropped him for the next game because of that. But I think it's about time that he had a chance to redeem himself. If he has to come off the bench, that is. Uh, we'll also have Hutchinson. We'll have Villa on the bench. Just in case. Because you never know. Uh, we will also have... We won't have Saville. We'll have Douglas Pringle. He hasn't played for us in a while, so we might bring him off the bench. Um, we will have Thompson. We will have Tom Lawrence. And we will have... Uh, we'll have Wilson. So there we go. That's our lineup. Once again, we're seven minutes in, and we're just starting the match. I've probably got to stop these uh, monologues at the start of each episode, because uh, they do drag on a little bit, I admit. Uh, the key thing now, though, is let's let's beat Exeter. Let's have a really good start in the FA Cup. Uh, let's try and push on and see how far we can actually get. We don't necessarily need the money that you get from winning these rounds, but the uh, the prestige, the reputation, and also the, just the, the chance of winning silverware will really, really motivate our players. I know we've already won two league titles, but the FA Cup is a big, big, big tournament. So to get even close to the final would be fantastic. Uh, Jones there with the shot. Again, demonstrating what I mean about um, complete wingbacks. Because normally he wouldn't be that far up the pitch. But you see he made the attack there. He made the run. Uh, and he actually got a pretty decent shot away as well. So uh, that could have ended up being 1-0. Um, Klopmas is on the left-hand side taking throw-ins. Again, I might need to, to change that. There's Jones again on the edge of the box. Poor shot this time, because it was on his right foot rather than his left. But again, he was on the edge of the box. So, he wasn't just there because of the throw-in. He was there because of the uh, the complete wing-back. Uh, that was a poor free kick from... Uh, is it Kevan? Kevin? Hurst? That's his surname, anyway. Hurst. Poor free kick. Jones has taken a knock already, which isn't very good. Uh, we'll have to keep an eye on him. Johnston with the corner, nice low and flat to the front post. Tickles around the box a little bit, cleared for a throw in. Yeah, I'm looking on the radar, we only seem to have one player back for corners. So I think I'm definitely going to have to review that. I said I'd do it in the last episode, but I forgot, in all honesty, I forgot. So uh, we'll take another look at that. I will do it after this episode. However long it takes me, I will do it. Uh it looks like we've sold out the away end as well. It's good to see that we've got loyal fans. Because every week for a home game, they're having to make a 40-mile like a round trip to Chelsea. Stamford Bridge. I still don't agree with that. Um, if anyone knows what I'm talking about, we have to ground share with Stam at uh, Stamford Bridge for the first half of this season. Maybe even longer, whilst our stadium's being redeveloped. Um, I still think we could have ground shared with a lower league club or a lower leagued club like a Barnet or a Stevenage because um, realistically that's the kind of capacity that we're expecting to get how Mantum snuck that header in there I don't know um, actually talking about Mantum signed him from Rangers 
as you know, for a fair amount of money actually, but in real life he's currently playing for Walsall I believe it is, um, and he's actually playing pretty good, so it looks like he's a good football league player, um, and it also looks like he's got the abilities to, to play above this level, so uh, he seems to be a pretty shrewd purchase. Um, but I'm not taking the credit for it. It was not me who found him. It was Jonathan Searcher, our director of football, who discovered him and signed him. So uh, it is his goal that has put us 1-0 up at half-time. We'll jump straight into the second half. Uh, potential subs. Jones on 80%. Beckhold maybe. He's down to 86 But then I suppose I'll have to bring Drusen off as well. Oh, excuse me, yawning. Right. Uh, yeah, so if I bring Jones off, I'm going to have to move Klopp over to left back and then bring someone on, possibly Veer, just to really shake up their defence. He wasn't fit enough to start, but I reckon he's got enough in him to, to come on as a sub. Uh, that's good covering there from Partridge. He had to come over from the left side of defence to make that interception, but he did it, and he did it well. Uh, that's a very clever header from Morrison. It's just unlucky that Johnston decided he didn't want to chase it properly. He should have followed that in a straight line. Instead he didn't. He peeled off. Uh, Stevens and Jones getting in each other's way there. Uh, and they're not really looking that eager to win it back. Well played Klotmus. He got in there and made the challenge. And he's found Drewson. He knocks it down the line. That's a good ball for Johnston. Not the best first touch, and I don't know why he was shooting from that far out either. But he's, he's forced a corner, I suppose, so credit to him for that, providing it's a decent one. It wasn't a very good one. He found the only part of the box where none of our players could get on the end of it. And that's also a poor cross. He has another chance from this corner. Whipped it in. He's got another chance to cross it again. He's pulled it back to the edge of the box where... I think Stevens stopped Forster Kasky getting on the end of that one. Looking at it. Uh, Stevens on the ball here though. Ah, ambitious but rubbish. Right, I'm going to bring Veer on now. 56 minutes gone. Jones is just going to be downhill from here. So we'll, f we'll flick Klopmus over to the left and we'll bring Veer on. Because he, he likes to attack defenders. Um, he makes very good runs. And I think he'd compensate... Oh, excuse me, I'm yawning again. Um, he will compensate Drewson down that side and maybe stop Johnston having to cross the ball, which wouldn't do us any harm, considering Johnston can't really cross a ball that well at the moment. Uh, I don't know what's got into him. He used to be our best set-piece taker, I think. He certainly used to, to create a lot from corners. Um, as you know, Villa and McGregor are two set-piece takers now. Alright, Forster Kasky with a clever ball to Beckhold. Why Johnston did that, I don't know. Why Klotmus did that, I don't know. But luckily we've got players like Partridge who know how to kick the ball forwards. And Stevens, of course. He found a good ball to Drewson there. Into Mantum, curled it. Sorry, not Mantum, Morrison. Curled it just wide. Uh, that would have been a good goal, actually. I criticise my players a lot for passing the ball backwards. Normally, I wouldn't mind. But when there's a really good opportunity to pass it forwards and there's the player who you could pass it to isn't being marked, that's when it frustrates me when they turn around and pass it backwards. Uh, that was clever. That was a very clever goal. And actually, Johnston played, a, played a, a pretty crucial role in that. So maybe I'm being a bit harsh on him after all. That was clever. Johnston there into Beckhold. Flicked it round the corner. No question about whether Morrison was offside. He was about three yards on. And then just pivoted round on his stronger right foot and volleyed it into the bottom corner. So a very, very well taken goal there from Steve Morrison. Uh, it is a little bit worrying when I look at the stats and see we've had 12 shots but only three on target. I definitely know where we need to improve. We definitely need to, we need to get some more coaches with attacking uh, stats and try and make our strikers hit the target a bit more often. Um, it's disappointing when you see a player hit it and it goes straight into the stands. doesn't matter really where they are on the pitch, they should still be able to hit the target. Uh, so yeah, it's frustrating when that happens. 
Right, is Veer going to win this one or is he going to let McCulloma run past? He's going to let McCulloma run past him, okay. Is he going to stop the cross? No, he's not. Is he going to stop the shot? No, he's not. Luckily, the shot goes wide. That would have been a disappointing goal to concede had that gone in. I'm going to make another sub. I said about Douglas Pringle not coming on too often and playing for us too often, so I'm actually going to bring him on. Forster Kasky is going to be the player who makes way. I can't remember if you guys saw this on camera or not, but um, the Brighton manager was getting a little bit frustrated because I wasn't playing Forster Kasky too much. So uh, I've played him a bit more often to try and uh, to solve that problem, and he seems to be a bit happier now. So uh, I think I've done a good job there. And actually, I, I like Forster Kasky. He is a very good player. He's a good player on the game, and he's a very, very good player in real life. He plays a lot of Brighton's games. So um, at the end of his loan spell, I will consider putting in a bid to sign him permanently. Uh, we have had a, a shortage of midfielders this season, due to mainly due to injuries, but also due to suspension. So uh, to have an extra one in the ranks wouldn't hurt, would it? Um, and it's just beefing up key areas. If I can sign one key player from each position... So, one key centre-back. Don't need a goalkeeper because I've got a really good one. In fact, I don't really need a centre-back because Cartwright and Stevens do play well. Um, but one key striker especially. A striker who can also hit the target as well as a coach who can show him how to hit the target. Uh, backroom staff. Signing some decent backroom staff is almost as important as signing decent players out on the pitch. You want to get it right. Uh, one more sub because Villa is not looking good out there so I'm going to bring Hutchinson on again in that right back position um, and I'd like to keep a clean sheet in this match if possible oh Partridge that was a really poor poor ball to give away Quintarka with a fantastic save and Stevens with a very very heavy clearance that's just poor from Partridge really 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 poor from Partridge and I, I, I hate the way it said at the bottom of the screen as well um, he skipped over the challenge as if he'd actually got away from Cummins but he hadn't he'd given him the ball and then let him go past Quintaka again with a good save apologies if you guys can hear that noise that is our phone ringing which nah it's not important right Sorry about that, guys. There's no way to turn that on silent, unfortunately. Uh, if there was, I would. I'm really hoping that no one in my house is watching these videos because I'll probably be in trouble for saying that, but... Oh, well. Uh, right, we're killing time now at the end of this game. Might try and push for one last goal. You can see Hutchinson getting the ball in. And, uh, yeah, it took a deflection, so he's won us a corner. Um, that's the other interesting thing. It'd be, it'd be good to see which of our wing-backs actually plays the full-back... Now, which of our full-backs plays the wing-back role best? Because it might not be uh, Via and Jones. In which case, you know, we'll have to consider their positions in the team. Um, and it sounds strange saying that, considering they are our best full-backs. But it's about how you play the position as well as playing the role. So... I really can't speak today. It's, it's about playing the role as well as playing the position. So if you can't play a wing-back role, even though you're good at full-back, then you're not going to get in the team. Uh, and vice versa, of course. Uh, so I'll look at all that off-camera between this episode and next episode, because as you can see, the match has finished, and it's finished 2-0 to us. So our debut in the FA Cup has been rather successful, I'd say. Joining in the first round, uh, and we're through to the second. Oh dear, Stevenage have sacked their manager. Torquay have sacked their manager. We've been given a, a token amount of money. That's not going to help us at all. Uh, Carino is back to full training, which is good, because I like him. Five goals in seven games for us. Uh, player moving on loan to Concord Rangers. Uh, and yeah, that about sums up this episode, guys. So uh, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, be sure to click the subscribe button. Um, if you have subscribed to my channel, thank you guys for your continued support. And until next time, I will see you soon.